What's up everyone, my name is Talmadge and welcome back to Big Bro Security. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux on your home PC. Let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do to install Arch Linux on your PC is open up your web browser and go to archlinux.org. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will be installing Arch Linux on a VM. However, what I do recommend if you're wanting to use this as a dedicated workstation is just install it on bare metal. The only difference in this process is that to install it on bare metal, you need to write it to a USB using a tool like Rufus.ie for Windows or Etcher for Mac OS. It's extremely simple, super easy to do, so we will skip that step. Anyways, go to archlinux.org, click downloads, scroll down to your country of choice, which for me is the United States. Once you've selected your mirror, click download. And as you can see, my download is pretty quick because the ISO is extremely small. Now that our ISO is done downloading, let's go ahead and create this VM. So we'll go ahead and click new and name this Arch Linux. Select our ISO. And from here, we will click hardware and I will give it two, four, five, seven, six megabytes of RAM, which is 24 gigabytes. For processors, I will give it eight because my machine is pretty hefty for running VMs. We'll enable EFI because Arch Linux normally boots on EFI on a standalone system, at least if it's a newer system. For disk size, I'm gonna go ahead and give this 100 gigabytes as I have plenty of space on here. Click finish, here we go. And now let's boot up our machine. Important to note, if you are putting this on a normal machine, then you'll simply want to open up Rufus, click the ISO, click your USB, write to USB, then turn your computer off, plug it in your computer and click boot up. Make sure your computer is connected to ethernet as that's gonna make it a million times easier to load this on your device. We're gonna go ahead and click into the install menu. Now, if you're using a non-standard keyboard, you're going to run the command find slash user slash share slash kbd slash keymaps slash and then dash type f pipe more. This will list all the key maps that you could have. I know if you're using Dvorak or another non-standard layout, you're gonna wanna take a look at this and find the name. Once you find the name, you'll be able to run load keys and then include the name. So if you're doing Dvorak, it would be Dvorak dash R. However, I'm just using a standard QWERTY American layout keyboard, so this isn't a concern to me. The next thing we'll do is make sure that this booted into EFI. So we'll do ls slash sys slash firmware slash EFI slash EFI vars. As you can see, it lists stuff, which means we're booted into EFI. We'll ping archlinux.org to make sure we have network connection, and we do. Now let's get the IP address of our machine and the network interface information. As you can see, we have ENP0S3, and our internet address is 10.0.2.15. If you're on a home network, likelihood this is gonna be 192.168.0. something, but because VirtualBox is building this extra network inside my computer. It's a 10 dot address in enterprise environments. I've seen people normally use 10 dot addresses. So that's just something to be aware of. Now we'll do date and then time date CTL set dash NTP true. What this does is it sets our system hardware to and follow an NTP server so that we're always accurate. Run date again. And obviously this one was actually accurate already. So we're good run ls be okay and as you can see we have our two disks our main one is the sda sr0 was the arch is the arch iso that we're running things off of so we'll go ahead and do cf disk make a label type of gpt for your disk click new and we'll do a one gigabyte boot partition set the type of this to efi system We'll make a swap of 12 gigabytes. I don't really need swap. That's why I'm making it so small. If you needed it, I would recommend doing the same amount as you have RAM, but we'll set this one to Linux swap. And then the bottom with the rest of the remaining size, we'll change the type of this to Linux file system, click right, type yes, and then quit. LSB OK now returns our proper partitioned drive. To make the file systems, we do mkfs.fat-f32-dev-sda1. 
formatting our EFI dry, formatting our EFI partition as FAT32. Next, we'll do MK swap slash dev slash SDA2. Now we'll do swap on slash dev slash SDA2. That turns on the swap. To make our main partition for our main OS, we'll do MKFS dot ext4 which is the most common linux file system slash dev slash sda3 as you can see it took a bit longer because there was a lot more space but we're done now let's mount our drive sda3 to slash mount and we'll make a directory slash mnt slash boot make directory slash mount slash boot slash efi and then mount our boot partition, which is SDA1 to slash MNT slash boot. The next step is we're going to change our mirrors so that way when Arch Linux is downloading updates, it's downloading it from the most efficient place possible. So we'll do vim slash etsy slash pacman dot d slash mirror list. As you can see, it already has an auto populated bit of mirrors here. This is working fine for me right now, but if you're experiencing slowness, I would go ahead and add in mirrors that you know are closest to you. Go to vim slash se slash pacman.conf. And here you can see we want to enable multi-lib. This is going to be used in the next video for establishing some more tools on our machine, but we'll go ahead and add this. Colton WQ exclamation point is used to write, close, and force it in Vim. I like to use Vim. That's just the syntax for it. All right, now we are going to run packstrap slash MNT to our drive base, base devel, Linux, Linux dash firmware. Vim and VIFM, which is a Vim based file manager. This is going to install all our base OS packages onto our final machine. So we'll go ahead and let that run. And it runs pretty quickly because Arch Linux is super duper lightweight. Now we're going to run gen fstab dash u slash mnt to direct that to slash mount slash etsy slash fstab. Let's ch root into mount, which is basically arch change root into the mount. So we're basically entering now our actual OS that will be running on our drive. Once we're there, we're going to want to run ln dash sf slash user slash share slash America slash Chicago. This is whatever time code that you are in. I'm in America, Chicago time zone. So that's what we're doing. Slash sc slash local time. Then set the hardware clock to the system clock. And do vim slash etsy slash locale dot gen. Now scroll down here until you find your set locale. For me, that is en underscore us dot utf dash eight utf eight. Press I to allow you to edit backspace the pound symbol and then colon wq to write and close. Now run locale gen and it will generate the locales for us. Perfect. Now let's echo lang equals en us dot utf dash eight two slash etsy slash locale dot conf we'll echo our host name echo t3 dash arch two slash etsy slash host name and we need to create our host file now slash etsy slash hosts press i to enter edit mode in vim backspace the pound and create our host file with 127.0.0.1 tab localhost then new line colon colon one localhost and 127.0.0.1 p3 dash arch dot local domain p3 dash arch From here, we will run mk init 
cpio dash p and this is just building everything kind of finalizing stuff for us now let's go ahead and install network manager this is a really important package that you will for sure need pacman dash s network manager proceed with installation and we'll run system ctl enable network manager this will allow it to start on upon startup, which is what we will need. So that way our network gets initialized. We'll create a password for root. And there our password is created. Next up is to install our boot manager so that we can actually boot into this OS. So let's run pacman dash s grub and efi boot mgr. We'll install those packages really quick. Now let's run grub dash install target equals x86 underscore 64 dash EFI EFI directory equals slash boot slash EFI. This is installing our bootloader and now the installation is finished. We'll run grub mk config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. This is just making our grub configuration file. I want to be able to SSH in this machine. So we are going to run pacman dash s open SSH. There we go, we've installed it. Now to start the SSH daemon, we need to run system ctl enable sshd. There we go. Now we can run exit, then umount dash r slash mmt. So this is recursively unmounting everything within slash mount and then reboot. All right, everyone. So that includes the video. Make sure to tune in for part two next week on how to turn your Arch Linux computer into a full fledged hacking server. If you like the video, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below any questions you might have or suggestions for future things you want me to do with this Arch Linux install or other videos that you want me to make. Stay secure.